What's going on fam? Welcome to the video today. Today's video is very specific. I wanted to just address a bunch of questions that I've got. Like literally this is probably like top three highest asked question. Number one being, where'd you get your leggings? Number two being, what are you and Brian doing for moving in together? And then number three being, how do I warm up, cool down, all that kind of stuff. And I am not a leading expert when it comes to mobility and movement. So I wanted to make a video specifically about this for you guys to show you what I do for warming up for myself, but also just the basics that you guys can know and apply to your own training. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, everyone, so warming up. What are the benefits of doing a warm up before you actually work out? For me, there's three benefits, preventing injuries, increasing range of motion on your lifts, and just getting in the zone in general, getting ready to lift. So the first thing that is definitely a good idea to do is to increase your body temperature, doing like a five to 10 minute warm up just on the treadmill or walking or doing the elliptical or something really light, just enough to basically break a sweat. Warming up in general improves your performance when your hips are open, your knees are warm, your shoulder mobility is enhanced, and all of these things help you to improve the way your actual lift goes. Just a disclaimer everyone, specific movements and drills are typically prescribed per person depending on how you feel, how you personally move individually, and what different kinds of things that you might be needing to improve whatever is going on with your body and what's going on with your lift. So don't take this as Bible everyone. You may need some of these things if they are particular issues of yours. So take this as more general advice, just not a medical prescription or anything like that. For a dynamic warm up, which essentially just means moving your body as you're kind of going through stretching motions or motions that are similar to the motion you would be doing if you were doing your exercises, I like to go through a combination of different ones, especially if I'm doing a lower body workout. So some of my favorite lower body dynamic warm ups are an alternating lunge with a twist a quad stretch with an opposite arm going up, high knees and butt kicks just to get myself moving back and forth, yoga plank push-ups, which are essentially where your feet are wide open and you go into a downward dog position and then you go back down and do a push-up. So Frankensteins are awesome too, which are just leg kicks um, with opposite arm and opposite leg. Banded crab walks for getting those abductors firing, especially when you're doing lower body work. As for upper body exercises, I like to do shoulder rolls forward, both small and large. So I do, I'll do some forward and then backward and then make them bigger forward and bigger backward. Some light shoulder presses, whether you're using a band or a dumbbell. Some really light lateral raises, whether again, band or dumbbell putting a little tension on the band and then bringing your shoulders behind your behind your head and then up and around a little bit just to kind of get your shoulders, um, your rotators moving. I like to do some static stretches last and studies do show that doing your static stretching after you do your dynamic stretching, it doesn't really impair your range of motion in particular. I watched Jeff Nippard's Science Explained video. There are a few studies showing that having done static stretching before your dynamic stretching does kind of impair your lift a little bit. So go check out his video for all the Science Explained stuff he is an expert on that. Some static stretches that I can that I like to do for upper body are some shoulder stretch from side to side, an upper back stretch kneeling, and an upper back stretch from like a downward dog. Because I roll my shoulders so often when I'm sitting down and I always try to think about pulling them back. So upper back stretching like that really helps me get to my upper back in the right place, especially for squatting. Next, I'll do a specific warm up for whatever exercise I'm doing. So today I was doing squats. My progression, a lot of you guys asked like, what weight do you go up at what percentage, all that kind of stuff. Each rep, even with lighter weight, is exactly like a rep that has a lot of weight on. So I use these sets to make sure that I go through the motion as perfectly as I can to prime my body for the movement. So I will usually start off with the bar. I'll do between five to eight reps with just the bar and really focusing on hitting depth, exploding up out of the bottom and making sure all of these reps are perfect. And then I'll add about 50% to the bar for another five to eight reps. I will then go to between 60 and 65% for another five to seven reps or so, depending on what I'm doing that day. Then I'll move up to about 70% for another three to four reps. And for this kind of progression, it's really just a balance between not overexerting yourself and not adapting your body to the weight you need to use during those working sets. So find something for yourself that is right around this and that works and feels really good for you. Some people make bigger jumps and more, more quickly, and some people need to allow a few reps at smaller increments for their body to adapt and feel the best. But if you kind of follow something like this 
work it around how you feel the best and then you'll find something that's right in your groove. So today I was doing 72% of my estimated one rep max, which is right around 245. So I stopped there and just went right into my four sets of six for squats. I first did about 165, 165 pounds to see how it felt because I'm currently still gaining my strength back, but it felt really easy. So I went up to 175 pounds, which is essentially right where I would be um, with my previous one rep max being 245 pounds. So that's awesome news. I thought I was losing strength and it took a little while to gain it back, but I am back. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it answered a lot of your questions. I'm certainly not the leading expert when it comes to mobility and movement. I have referenced a few people down below in terms of stuff that I have looked at that have helped me in the past and other people that are really, really experts at what they do. Number one person I would check out for mobility and movement information is Kelly Sturett. His information is gonna be in the description box. His YouTube channel link is right here if you guys just wanna search this. It's called Mobility Wad. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos. This guy is completely the expert if you guys are interested in more information on movement and mobility but I hope this video answers some of the questions about the basics that you guys had. Thank you guys so much I will catch you in the next video which will be on Friday posting videos every Monday Wednesday Friday for the series super excited about it make sure you guys are staying tuned click that subscribe button click the like button if you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you guys in the next one